of the vehicles we call SUVs nowadays have no business going off-road or doing anything even remotely sporty. What the majority of modern-day SUVs are, in reality, are people movers. Big, wide, five, seven, maybe even eight-seater vehicles with huge doors and high roof lines. Wait a second. SUVs are just minivans. You all set? All set. Welcome to the Hyundai Palisade Calligraphy, an SUV that's really more of a luxury people carrier. And when I say luxury, I really do mean luxury. Well, according to Hyundai, anyway. I know that nowadays the car buying public expects even the most bog standard car to cost about as much as a box of popcorn from the 1930s, but feel like a weekend at the Waldorf Astoria. However, with the Palisade calligraphy, Hyundai have tried really hard to shake their economy car reputation and build a vehicle which is luxurious enough to compete with the likes of the Germans and the Japanese. I mean, check this out. How many 50 grand cars do you know with an intercom? Now, who wants ice cream? Yay! So Hyundai think the calligraphy is good enough to sit at the top of the top of their SUV lineup. But my question is this. In focusing on luxury, have Hyundai perfected the formula for a spacious, sumptuous people mover or made an SUV which is even more flawed than usual. What we've got here is a mid-cycle update. And that brings some additional technology, a few extra luxury interior comfort features, and some revised styling. And actually, I'd like to start with how this car looks. Now, we'll begin at the back because, honestly, I've got a few problems with how the front end of this car looks. And the back is, um, it's fine. The rear overhang is shorter, the front longer, and the wheelbase remains exactly the same. Overall length is now 196.7 inches, and literally none of that matters. No one's going to be taking this car off-road, and honestly, if they do, they're idiots, because they're going to scratch up all this lovely paintwork. But because this is, loosely speaking, an SUV, we have to talk about these things. Uh, what I really want to talk about, though, is this front end, which, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me. People seem to really like it. I think it's a bit of a dog's dinner. Hyundai call it the Cascade design. I call it 1980s Peterbilt Semi. I just can't get past the fact that this chrome is everywhere. What Hyundai probably don't want me to say here is that the Palisade's sister car, the Kia Telluride, built on the same platform and to the same specification, looks 10 times better than Meanwhile, back at the Escalade, sorry, sorry, I mean the Palisade. Given that this is a luxury vehicle, what we really need to be talking about is the interior. Inside, Hyundai added comfort features across all three rows, but it is still very much a case of first-class business and economy. Taking a page from their premium sister brand Genesis, the Palisade adds a massaging feature to the driver's seat, and the second row now boasts headrests with movable wings for lateral head support. Heated seats are now offered in all three rows, but only the first and second row get cool ventilation, not the third. And whilst ordinarily that mightn't be something I'd mark a car down for, that's the problem when you call a vehicle luxury. It gets judged under a whole different set of criteria. For example... So up front I've got two 12.3 inch screens. This one here is a touchscreen and controls all the usual kind of media, navigation. The one in front of me is my digital tachometer, but it's just so busy. I mean, take these piano black pinstripes, for example. It's all just a little bit 2012 Mercedes-Benz C-Class, isn't it? I think we've moved on. We've also got a fully digital rear view mirror, USB-C ports, wireless car charging, Harman Kardon premium audio, and full Wi-Fi connectivity for up to five devices. So then, for a 50 grand car, the Palisade Calligraphy has pretty much all the right bells and whistles. We've got a new steering wheel design for 2023, which people have been raving about, but I think it kind of looks a little bit cheap. I don't know. Also, this 
metal surround here that's kind of the focal point of the design. I think it looks like that thing that they give you at the dentist when they're like, oh, stretch your guns out like that. This also leaves a really horrible metallic smell on your fingers, which is something that no reviewer is going to talk about. But my God, you'd be annoyed if you spent $50,000 on a car and then every time you got out of it, your fingers smelt like you've been rooting around in a bag of pennies. On the outside, we've got a hands-free smart lift gate with an auto open function. There's also power folding, unfolding and reclining third row seats. And it's got this, remote smart park assist, which I'm not quite sure is a luxury feature, but it's a feature nonetheless. So let's see how it works. Oh, well, that's kind of parked, I guess. Well, I've seen worse. Moving swiftly along, we're on to performance. So, how does this thing drive? Let's see. Okay. Okay. Ah. Hmm. There really isn't. And we can cut around it, I suppose, right? I mean, it's... That sort of sums it up. It's fine, but it isn't going to win any races. Or any beauty contests. <laughs> Every Palisade, whether you're talking about the bottom of the line or this, the calligraphy top of the line, is offered with the same 3.8 litre V6, offering 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. The engine is mated to an automatic 8-speed transmission, which has been slightly revised to allow for a better towing capacity in 2023. But let's be honest, how many people are going to be towing with their calligraphy? Again, this is a case of Hyundai trying to make the calligraphy all things to all people when perhaps they should have focused their efforts. It might have been nice to have had a V8 or a smooth hybrid system, something with a bit more status, something more luxurious than their regular old V6. And right there, we're back to our central issue. If you call a car luxury, then prepare for people like me to get critical. Speaking of which, the steering is artificially light, the brakes are mushy and the suspension leaves a lot to be desired. In our testing, the Palisade Calligraphy managed 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. The quarter mile was achieved in 15.1 seconds at a speed of 93.2 miles an hour, which is not bad for a car that weighs 4,885 pounds and has a V6. If you forced me to find a positive, I'd say it's nice when you put it in sport mode and the bolster of the driver's seat inflates to hug you in. As an incredibly lonely person, I like that cars have finally learned to cuddle. As one of my colleagues said when he reviewed this car on its first drive, if it had a BMW or a Lexus badge, it would be $75,000 easily. And as it is, Hyundai have managed to make a luxury feeling product and bring it in at a nip over 50 gram, which is very impressive. My issue comes really though not with this car specifically, but with what this car says and does for Hyundai the brand as they move forward. It's easy to forget that Hyundai had a lousy SUV lineup of just two models five years ago. Now it has seven models covering every segment of the SUV market. And together with Genesis and Kia, they have an industry leading selection of incredible EVs and great combustion powered cars. And then you've got this, the Palisade, which just feels a little bit of a backward step considering the miraculous work they've done on some of their other vehicles in their lineup. In trying to be everything, the Palisade calligraphy has ended up being spectacularly middling. It's not sporty, has little to no off-road credentials, and whilst it's luxurious, it's leagues away from being a bona fide luxury vehicle. Much like the modern day SUV itself, the calligraphy is jack of all trades, master of none.